Okay, now that everything is set up on the ServiceNow side, let's take care of React. I'll go back to GitHub and clone the repository. So here you'll make you'll have to make sure that Git is installed in your machine. I already cloned the repository, so I have the folder here. So I'll just cd into the folder and install all of the node dependencies. You'll have to make sure that npm and node.js are installed in your computer. I already have everything installed, so it will just check that everything is up to date. And we're all set, so I'll start the React development server. The dev server is running and the build is compiled. So I'll go to localhost. And here it is. The app is running as it should. Let's see if hot reloading is working. I'll open the application in VS Code. Here's the SN React folder. And let's edit the app.js file. We'll change this for hello world. And here it is, it's updated. So hot reloading is working. And as you can see so far, the development experience is pretty much similar to create React app or any other way that you would develop React normally. But now let's see where it's different. I'll go to the configuration file where the options are listed for development and the production build. Uh, let's start with the REST API path. This property should not be changed. It's a default prefix for all ServiceNow APIs, and you could just leave it be. The ServiceNow instance is the URL to your instance. It is used only in development as a proxy for all of your requests, and you will need it if you if you want to fetch records or update records on your instance during development. Uh, for authentication, you will use the React App user and React App password by providing a username on this instance. The next parameters are used for only for the build process. So these three are paths to the resources that your your assets will be stored on the instance. Uh, for example, the assets API path should be the same as the resource path on your instance right here. And for the asset size limit, for all assets like fonts and images that are below this uh, this number of bytes, they will be embedded in your JS bundle. The files that are larger than this, they will be saved as separate files. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about the configuration, let's actually build the, the app for production and for deploying to ServiceNow. We'll go back to terminal, stop the server, and run npm run build. <laughs> 